So, ladies and gentlemen, we have been continuing our discussion on narcissism. I made a video on identifying narcissistic behavior among people and narcissists using astrology. So, if you have not watched that video, please go and see in my homepage. You should uh, be able to find it in the recent, like maybe a seven to ten days back. And three, four days back, I made another video on symptoms of uh, people who have narcissistic uh, behavior. So how do you identify them? Right. So, but then there is one question which always remains. Either we identify them using astrology or just by their behavior. But at the end of the day, how do we deal with them? Right. Because even if you identify uh, the challenge still remains and that doesn't change anything. Yes. And this is very important for us to identify that. Uh, it's important for us to understand that identifying them, uh, this has no change in their behavior. <laughs> yeah, that's very unfortunate. But before we uh, discuss on uh, the solutions, it is very important for us to understand that we may identify people, but before identifying anybody, we have to see that we ourselves are not behaving in that way. Because we may identify so many people, but maybe somebody else is also identifying us, right? So therefore, <clears throat> make sure that we do not fall into that category. And then let us see what all we can do right so and as usual if you're new to the channel then please subscribe to it down below and if you want a consultation from me then my website is also down below god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him and he will help you to deal with narcissistic people <laughs> so what's the first way to deal with them and the best <laughs> It's by not dealing with them. Yes, it's that simple. Just by not dealing with them. Because one of the symptoms of a narcissist is when you meet them, they're very nice, very flamboyant, can be very attractive also physically. But after the interaction, you feel completely drained. Oh my God. You, you feel, oh my God, what happened? I just fought some war or I it was like a it was like a very big thing for me it was like survival <laughs> now why this happens is because the narcissists will very frequently try to put you in a place where you have to defend yourself you have to prove something about yourself right so Whenever you are forced to prove something, many, many, many times, if it's happening frequently or if it happens very frequently when you meet the person, then most likely the person is very narcissistic because what the person is doing is uh, they are actually finding some shortcomings that you have. And then uh, they will try to magnify them and they will try to prove it to you that uh, your life is a complete waste because you you are a failure at that part or what they can do sometimes is they will take one area of life which is very nice which they're very jealous of but then what they will do is there will be some other area of life where apparently they are doing better than you so then they will try to prove it to you that Oh, doing this, doing great in this area is not a big deal, you know, but you must do great there also. And because you don't have anything there, you are a bloody failure. You are useless. That's what they will do. So, for, for example, it, it can be in any area. So, from something very silly, like, for example, if a person uh, has a decent, good married life, for example. But the person doesn't have a very nice career and the person really wants to have a lot of money and have a lot of name fame. And suppose you have a good career, but somehow either your marriage is not that great or maybe or you are not married at all. So then 
you go and tell them hey uh, sir or madam i got this promotion you know i went to google i went to facebook or whatever i mean some fancy company <clears throat> which they think is very appealing now what they will do is then they will say oh yeah yeah nice 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 has nice. and what about marriage you know where are you getting married right so now that can be a genuine concern uh, if the person is your well wisher and it's a valid concern nothing wrong in uh, having a good career and getting married but why i'm giving this example is because they understand that you may not be married so they will they will do anything and everything to show you that your life is only valuable if you have if you have marriage in your life otherwise uh, you you are you are a nobody basically right so then you have to prove them no no sir, uncle auntie or whoever you know i will try to get married next year yeah i am looking for proposals or whatever so you have to prove yourself you have to it's like with the narcissist it's always like a courtroom where they are throwing allegations on you they are trying to pull you down it's it's like a constant battle that you have to uh keep happening with yourself <clears throat> so that's why it's not an easy task it's very daunting so <clears throat> therefore the best way is to deal with them is by not dealing with them try to avoid them as much as possible avoid them by the physical means which means you if you see them just <laughs> <clears throat> or when you are talking to them uh, which means when they are spilling out all their narcissistic poison you can keep looking at your watch <laughs> now this is one very good technique which uh, my shiksha guru had taught me once you know when somebody is talking is blabbering nonsense which has nothing to do with elevating anybody in this universe and just wants to gratify their ego by pulling somebody down or by pulling themselves up just keep looking at the watch then they will understand oh yeah this person has to go somewhere <clears throat> so best is you don't deal with them so no no talk complete boycott this is this is like the best solution then if you can't do that you meet them and keep seeing the watch every 30 seconds and then you will oh why are you looking at your watch you know hey, yeah I have, i have this work i have that work and we always have some work so <laughs> you can Uh, don't don't speak lies but uh, you you can say oh i have this work or if there's nothing that you have to say you can say i have to prepare for some uh astrology course <laughs> or I, i have to educate myself about astrology or maybe exotic astrology <laughs> just go and say any anything that you are up to and then just uh, finish it just uh, dismiss it then and there now suppose you still have to deal with them okay so you can't evade them you can't have short conversations and now you can't evade them okay so it's like you have to deal with them so now if you have to deal with them then you have to ask yourself this question what is what is the bare minimum connection that i can have with this person barest of the it's like barest of the bare <laughs> <clears throat> so you have to ask you so now if that person is your acquaintance you can have some superficial talk and you can say yeah catch you later that's fine because then there is not much uh, expectation but suppose this person is your friend and you have <clears throat> uh, experienced some narcissistic tendencies lately in the past months or this year then what do you do now you can't cut them off suddenly right so what do you do do you cut them off suddenly because if you do that then they will go and uh, do back back beating against you because uh they know that uh, you are like the garbage dump where they will come and throw all the crap and the nonsense right so if they do not find that with you anymore they 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 are going to spill poison venom it's like very dangerous okay they might spoil your reputation they they may do whatever they will do anything and everything to pull you down and to harm your reputation so do not do it at once okay unless that person is your acquaintance then please dismiss this person from your life i understand it's not good to speak like this but you got to do it otherwise you will lose your sanity better than 
becoming insane is to protect your sanity okay so now if this person is your friend take it slow uh, start ignoring them gradually it's very difficult because normal human beings can don't i mean it's not normal to ignore people right so in that case do not do much or rather any communication from your side okay so if this person is your friend and you lately realize that this person is going downhill with narcissism then stop messaging this person you know <clears throat> so for example you know but always remember even if you don't message they will always message you this is one of this is a very important trait they will never skip messaging you because they want to talk to you because they want to get some validation out of you now stop your stop the communication from your side okay unless there is something which you cannot get from any if they have some information which you cannot get from anywhere else in this universe then you can call that friend okay otherwise best is to stop entire communication okay and <clears throat> if you have that person's number in your whatsapp then it is always recommended that you should uh, somehow prevent this person from seeing your uh, status and uh, other stories okay i also know so many uh, narcissistic people i have hidden them from my i mean instagram stories and whatsapp and all this oops <laughs> i hope they don't see this video <laughs> okay so now you have cut you you have stopped your communication from your side but as i said they are communicating so now if they communicate then give very official replies ask about them how are you how's life ask take general questions <clears throat> but they won't be happy with it they will say oh aajkal to bahut busy rehte ho you are very busy these days right and they they will try to taunt you and uh, do guilt shaming it it means they will try to prove that you are at fault and you are not putting efforts to maintain the relationship so they will tell you oh what happened you know it seems you got a girlfriend now so you or you have a new boyfriend right so you you are not interested in friends these days now i can understand you know it happens of course <clears throat> even when they know very well that you are you are single and may or maybe you have uh, a partner but that's not who you are right that you deject uh, your friends because you have a new partner but they will do it they will tell you things because of which you will feel the need to defend yourself <clears throat> and then what happens the next thing that they will do is they will you know keep either they will keep typing 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 you know all their stories as in asmis we say dhara pat likhibo it's like you know all their novels you know of how great they are or what a big victim they are you know how they came out of all the nonsense you know they will be writing all this <clears throat> and then what do you do you you can you you can again give very official responses you know oh yeah good uh, keep it up you made it but i'm telling you they won't stop here they will try to go to the next level if they don't see that you are responding well what they will do is they will try to call you okay and if they are calling you do not pick their phone not always <laughs> you can't do it always they, they will understand you know there's something wrong going on here <clears throat> like i have made this rule whenever narcissistic people call me or they send me a mail or message if there's a mail or a message i reply them once in a week that's all once i reply i say yes good thank you very much all the best keep going right if they send some new message again i reply after a week and if they say they want to talk to me then oh my god not possible this month you, you can say oh, i am busy with my work or family or whatever protect your sanity <laughs> so in my case i talk to them once in 3 months and it's so pathetic that they will still end up calling me after 3 months because it's like 
they can't get rid of this you know uh, validation because they are very hollow and empty inside <clears throat> so for you you can start with one month at least or at least if you are very frequently talking and you know <clears throat> then best is once a week not more than that and if you are replying every day then only once you reply in a day Okay, maybe in the evening or in the night or when everything is very busy, you know, in the day, I think maybe you can reply. Some superficial reply you can give, okay. <clears throat> and if the if, if you some, <clears throat> and then the next level, what they will try to do is, if they talk to you and <clears throat> when now they will call you, then you should, you should behave in a very cold manner. Cold in the sense like, you know, don't seem too interested. <clears throat> And they will ask you about your life because they will they, they will have to show that your your life is not a very good life. <clears throat> so never give extreme answers to a narcissist. Al always give them a super boring answers. You know, <clears throat> like um, extreme answers means, oh yeah, I got a promotion. You know, oh I got fired from my job. These are like extremes. Very good, very bad. <clears throat> if they call you. How's how's your life? How's job going? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Uh, how's your how's your spouse? Yeah, yeah, fine. How parents? Yeah, yeah, fine. Somebody, yeah, some maje make dumb first class. All done. So they have no <clears throat> scope to uh, either uh, show that you, uh, to either pull you down from your happiness or to either uh, prove to you that you don't have something in life. And if they ask you <clears throat> of something which you don't have. So suppose uh, if they're asking you, uh, if you are not married and they keep asking you, oh, when are you going to get married? Or suppose you don't have a job, right? And they're asking you, they know that you don't have, but they're still asking you. So then you can say, uh, well, I'm trying. Uh, I will let you know when, when, when I find one. You can say this, okay? Because then they will understand, oh, this person doesn't like to be discussed. And this person... <clears throat> But they are so shameless sometimes. They may keep further asking you, right? Do you have it? Same answer. I think we discussed uh, last time, right? Um, I, I, I'll let you know. Thank you for your concern. I'll let you know. Um, so this is how you can deal. And limit your phone calls like once a week. In my case, like once in three months. I, I, I can't take more than that. And now suppose um, you are talking and they say we have to meet, right? Wow. It's a tough one. <laughs> so if they're trying to meet you, then limit your interactions to once a month, unless they are your office colleagues or somebody. And what, what should you do is, whenever they are talking against somebody, so it's very easy to understand, you know, when, when you meet a narcissist, they will either, uh, they will uh, spit on somebody's face or they will spit venom against somebody. It's very easy. <clears throat> to identify. Now, when they are doing that, do not show much interest. Do not um, do not show as if you believe them. You can be like, okay, okay. <laughs> you should show as if it doesn't matter who they are trying to pull down. You know? It just doesn't matter. I mean, whenever the narcissist will realize that they don't matter. Their opinions don't matter. They That is like open heart surgery. <laughs> it's like unbearable. It's unbelievably painful for them. Because their whole idea is that they get validated by somebody. So if you stop giving them the validation, either through phone calls or through text messages or in by meeting in person, then you will actually... Uh, tell them that yes you won't get this supply from me anymore and if they are trying to uh, pull you down then what you, you can do is this is something which uh, you you can try out not, not an easy one if they are trying to pull you down then you will find you should find some area in their life which which they are very weak at or which is not going maybe you know if they are asking too much about your 
uh, career, you know, you can ask them maybe if they are not married. Oh, and what about your marriage, right? When, when are you getting married or if they are married, you know, when, when are you going to have kids, right? So you can, this is called Shatho Shatyam. It, it means do that which they are doing to you. But of course, their intention is to bully you. Your intention is to shut their mouth. So this is perfectly fine. Don't be abusive, but use this technique. Okay. So if they are bullying you, you 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 uh, return that bully. You don't bully them, but return it and uh, hit somewhere which it hits hard. It, it really pains. Okay. But again, at the end of the day, the best is you have to you you have to stop interacting either by talk or in person or messaging you have to interact reduce or completely alienate <clears throat> and of course this becomes very tough you know when your parents fall into this category unfortunately or your very close relatives who are very close to your parents fall in this category so in that case, it becomes very difficult. And if in-laws are there, you know, it's also equally difficult, right? So if your parents are having uh, severe narcissistic tendencies, then what to do? Most, most of the people that I know, especially from India, they talk to their parents daily, every, once every day. It's the same with me. I, I also have a talk uh, with my mother or father, one of them, you know, every day. It's like one day goes without talking to them. It's like something is missing in life. So either I call them or they call me. But nonetheless, suppose your parents are having these traits, then number one, uh, that number one thing that you need to do is, first of all, you have to be reasonably respectful to them, reasonably, okay, because they are your parents after all, right? They are the, they are the cause and source of your ex existence. If they didn't uh, exist, then how would you exist, right? So, <clears throat> even if that's very superficial sometimes, that gratitude, because of their bad activities, we have lost respect, we have lost all love or we have lost all value for them in our eyes, we still should maintain a very basic level of decency when it, when it comes to parents because <clears throat> uh, the Vedic scriptures uh, explain that, you know, uh, we should always be respectful to the parents. That doesn't mean we have to agree to them. It doesn't mean we always have to say yes. It doesn't mean that you have to go to their line always. But be respectful to whatever extent possible. But now, maybe uh, being respectful does, just does not work. So, if you are somewhere, you know, 18, 20, 18, 19, 20 years, then you have an option. You can tell them, oh, but I would like to move out. You know, I want to stay in my... Uh, if, if your college is in the same city or same town, you can tell them, yeah, you know, everyday traveling is difficult, you know. Better I stay in a hostel in there and somehow try to convince them maybe they send you to the hostel. So there maybe you may have a better situation there, but you have to weigh out your pros and cons. If you're, uh, one of your parents uh, is a relative, is a bit narcissistic, then that's fine. But if somebody is like, is making your life living hell <clears throat> at your house, then you need to move out of the house, unfortunately. So, if you are a student, then that's something you can do. Till the age of 17, 18, you can't do much really because you 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 are quite under them, at least. In, in India, at least, that's how it works. <clears throat> so, after 18, please move out. If, if, if you feel, you know, that it's like you, you are not able to breathe, then please move out. That's the only solution. Or become fully engaged in studies and all and get good grades because in India at least you know if you get good grades everything is forgiven <laughs> it's like Ganga Snan right Sab Mafer Sat Khun Maf <laughs> all criminal activities are washed off when you get good grades so try to good get good grades even if you can't then try your best at least keep it to 80s now in my time it was 80s i don't know how much it was it's now maybe now it's 1995 <clears throat> and then 
uh, if you are married and your mother or father, like if you are a boy and your mother or father, they have very, very, very severe narcissistic traits, then best is not to stay together. Then best is uh, your parents stay, uh, they stay, if you are living in a flat, then you, you, you and your wife can take a flat, which is maybe in the same floor, but uh, it's a, it's it's a different flat or maybe it's one or two floors above one or two floors below depending on the degree of narcissism okay and then by that you know you can keep seeing them twice thrice a week you know <clears throat> and uh, the relation will also stay in the superficial relation because relationships with narcissists is always very superficial even if it's your parent or children or spouse okay <clears throat> So when you have, so when you have some decent separation, and suppose you are a man, and your your in laws are behaving this way, then uh, now how will they affect you, your married life, through your wife, because she is the common link. So your wife has to understand that she has to limit her interactions with her parents, because that will end up ruining your married life. So you have to explain this to your wife. Uh, provided she is also not a you know another spoiled narcissist. <laughs> if she is a good person, she will understand if you explain. <clears throat> and uh, the more your wife keeps telling about your life, your decisions to her parents, the more they will try to control you both, and the more your life will be ruined. And maybe in worst case, you have to separate if that continues. <laughs> and the same way, if you are a girl. And you feel uh, that your in-laws are behaving very narcissistically, then maybe you might have to stay in another place. So you also have to convince your husband. Okay. And of course, apart from that, there could be you know grandparents or your children, your child. And the worst case scenario is if your partner is a narcissist, your husband or wife. That's a very difficult scenario. And for that you really have to uh, manage your expectations because you may not get that level of empathy and love. You know, you have to make peace with it. Or maybe in worst case, you might have to stay separately, if not divorce, okay? But nonetheless, uh, overall, you have to understand that there are many things in life and you will never find that one person in your family is fully narcissistic and the others are all empathic. You will never find this. So... <clears throat> See to it, uh, talk to some guide or talk to some psychiatrist. You can take help of any uh, psychologist also. And you can see how you can deal best in that situation. <clears throat> and in the family, one of the best things you can do is if you feel that one person in your family is very challenging, then try to see who they talk most of the time with. And among those persons who has the least narcissistic tendencies. And then you can talk about that person with this person. So then they can tell you, oh, what they like, what they don't like. So you can see if you can manage that, if it is with your parents especially. If you think it's not possible, if you, if you have tried six months, one year, then best is to move out, stay somewhere nearby so that the relation stays so that they don't complain that you have left us. But it's still better than losing your sanity and becoming insane. All right. So the more the relationship, the more the depth, the more the problem. So with your spouse, very difficult. Then with your parents, maybe equally or more difficult. With your children, maybe not that difficult. At least a bit less difficult. You know, then with your brother, sister, uncle, aunt, less. It's, the difficulty is less. With your boss, my God. You might have to change the team or change the company. Worst case. Okay, so be prepared for it. <clears throat> because you can't change them. The, the more you fight, you know, you waste like three years fighting with the boss. And then at the end, you are thrown off, right? <clears throat> Of course, try try out uh, things. I'm not saying just, oh, this person has these traits, so I'm backing off. I'm not saying that. Try your best, but do not try more than three to six months. If after three six months of trying also, nothing's changing in the organization, 
and this person is bullying you, devaluing you, not giving you the promotion that you know you deserve, then leave the team or the organization in the worst case. Okay. Or there could be a number of problems. It's not just about promotion or salaries. But do not try to like fight too much. It, it doesn't work. And they, they the narcissists may be very smart also. They are smart, very smart sometimes to get their way done. No, because they may somehow convince their boss that oh, if they lose them, you know, the company will go to shambles, you know, in ruins. Okay. So then the boss of your boss may not listen to you. It's very simple because your boss's boss is also having another boss, right? <laughs> So it's a very complicated situation. And then for friends, it's relatively very easy. Acquaintances, it's a cakewalk. And for strangers, hopefully they remain strangers. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for your time. And I hope this video actually helps you uh, to uh, find how you can deal with the uh, different level of narcissists uh, within your uh, life. And best, as I said, is to not deal with them, avoid them. But if you can't, then here are these strategies, okay? Thank you very much once again for watching this video. If you like this, please click the thumbs up and share it with, don't share it. <laughs> share it with somebody who is dealing with narcissistic people and is trying to get out of them, okay? And yes, if you want a consultation, you will find my website down below. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him and he will help you get out of this toxic circles. Thank you.